We are all part of a larger story. It is our creator's ongoing story of the restoration of humankind. Ever since the fall of the human race into corruption, spiritual darkness and death, the world has been longing for light and life. All of creation has groaned under the weight of darkness, subjected to futility and in bondage to decay. Yet our Creator, through His chosen people, Israel, promised that He would restore light and life to the world. For long centuries, these promises awaited fulfillment. The prophet Isaiah spoke of a promised ruler who would come, saying, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The prophet Micah revealed from where the Messiah would come, saying, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient of days, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. The prophet Daniel revealed when the Messiah would come. During the lifetime of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, destroyed the Jewish temple built by Solomon in Jerusalem and took the Jewish nation into exile. The captive Daniel was chosen to serve in Nebuchadnezzar's palace. While Daniel served in the court of this idolatrous kingdom, Yahweh, God of Israel, gave King Nebuchadnezzar a mysterious and troubling dream. Then, in a vision, God revealed the meaning of the king's dream to Daniel, revealing the timing of the coming of his Messiah. The king dreamed of a bright and frightening figure, with a head of gold, a chest and arms of silver, its middle and thighs of bronze, and legs of iron with feet, partly iron and partly clay. God revealed to Daniel that the head of gold represented the Babylonian kingdom of King Nebuchadnezzar, after Babylon would come another kingdom of silver, then a third of bronze, and finally a fourth of iron. These four kingdoms are now widely understood to represent the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. In Nebuchadnezzar's dream, a great stone cut by God struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, breaking the gold, silver, bronze, and iron into pieces. After this, the wind carried them all away. The great stone became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. Daniel explained that in the days of the fourth kingdom, God would establish his own eternal kingdom. Daniel declared, and in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all of these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever, just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the silver, and the gold. A great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. In time, Judah returned from exile in Babylon and rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem. The prophet Malachi then revealed that the Messiah would come while the second temple was still standing, saying, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, 
Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Malachi, the last of the Mosaic Covenant prophets, saw the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, but the time of the Messiah was not fulfilled in his lifetime. After Malachi came 400 more years of silence from God. For 400 more years the fulfillment of the promises of God waited until the days of the Roman Empire, the Fourth Kingdom. At the fullness of time after centuries of waiting, God's long-awaited announcement came. God's light broke into the darkness of night. In the region of Bethlehem there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Of his kingdom, there will be no end.